One of the struggles I've had since I switched to Linux was finding like the perfect Linux video editing software. And of course you're never gonna, you're never really gonna find something perfect, but you always wanna find the best tool for the job. Sometimes that means straying beyond the free and open source. And for me, I don't personally mind. There'll be many out there that do. If you are one of those, this video is not for you. But what we're going to talk about today is DaVinci Resolve and why I so very much want to start using it because it is amazing to sum up why it could be the best Linux video editing software. Um, in a word, performance. Things like Caden Live and Blender, especially Blender, like playback performance in the timeline and rendering performance are quite subpar because they do not really have much GPU acceleration, if at all, especially in the case of Blender. Unless you're using Blender for 3D stuff, but we're not talking about 3D stuff. There's also Lightworks as an option, which is faster than those two, but um, neither of them compare to DaVinci Resolve. So, in the time that I was talking about that, if I switch over to the viewport here, this one right here, Job 1, um, I started that basically when I started this video, that's a 4K render, and it finished in a minute 27 seconds. The one below that, that is a 1440p render. So I'm gonna kinda let those play out a little bit as we go along here. Um, underneath the resolve window there, if I still have them open, I don't because I'm a, because I'm a professional. Let me go find those real quick. Um, so you can just kinda keep an eye on those as I find this stuff. Oh god, where did I put those? I know where I put them. They're right here. All right. So, what I'm about to bring up is a comparison of render times between Resolve, Caden Live, Lightworks, and Blender. Now, keep in mind the Lightworks one is only going to show 720p speeds because the free version of Lightworks only allows you to go up to 720p. So, immediately a bonus point to resolve there. Anyway, as you can see, the 1440p render was in slightly faster than real time. That This is a minute and one second long clip. 53 seconds for 1440p, minute 27 for 4K. It's just blazing through 1080p right now. And then the last one will be 720, but we'll get to that in a moment. So I'm gonna bring this over. And as you can see, Caden Live, the 4K render for Caden Live was 13 minutes and 24 seconds. So I don't know why there's such a huge discrepancy for that. Maybe maybe something to do with the file format because I think there's supposed to be certain things better optimized for higher resolutions, but whatever, things are weird with that. Um, 1440p took two minutes and two seconds, only three seconds faster, faster for some reason, than uh, 1080p, 720p, a minute 51. So as you can see here, the total time for uh, DaVinci Resolve to do all of these, let's see, minute 27, um, that's gonna make two minutes two seconds, two minutes 55, we'll just round that to about two minutes 25 seconds? 23? Is that 23, two minutes 23 seconds? Somewhere around there, two minutes 20 something seconds. So, basically, in the time it took DaVinci Resolve to render 4K, 1440p, 1080p, and 720p, Caden Live would have just gotten done with either the 1080 or the 1440 render. So, that's just render performance, mind you. Now, if you use a proper uh, codec for video editing in the first place, something like ProRes, um, things like DaVinci Resolve will work just fine with that, Light works as well. Blender still will not in terms of playback performance in the timeline because Blender's uh, video sequence editor just, it, it's not very well optimized, which is unfortunate. But um, based on these results, I'm caring less and less. Now, as with many things though, as great as it seems here, and it is great. Um, oh yeah, another thing that I wasn't able to show in these tests here, if I add like any sort of effects like even some slight basic color correction with Caden Live or Blender, the render times just like multiply basically. With DaVinci Resolve here, um, let's go to the color tab real quick. So let's see, this will raise up 
the gain a little, we'll lower the gamma, and bump the lift. Let's not do that. Let's at least make it look somewhat presentable. Raise the gain, lower the gamma. Um, let's kind of leave it like that way. Can I do like a zoom? Probably. Okay, either way, that's just a basic color correction. Let me go back to the deliver tab. Let's do the, we'll do the 720p for quickness. Do that again. And it's still flying through it, just like before. And that is the beauty of GPU acceleration. Even with that, it, it was it was minimal color at color correction, yes. But if I did that in DaVinci Resolve, or sorry, in uh, Caden Live or Blender, like the render times would just increase massively from simple effects like that. So that's not going to be a problem with Resolve. And I. I don't know if it'll be a problem with Lightworks, but um, eventually I am going to do a uh, bit more of a comparison here. Okay, okay, as you can see, it did still increase the render times. We had 31 seconds here instead of 18, but I mean, that's still a hell of a lot faster than what I would get with Caden Live. Okay, let's go ahead and do, let's look at the 4K one again, just, just for worst case scenario. So render that again, see how long that takes. Uh, based on that, it's still only going to take like two minutes. So we're, we'll let that go in the background once more as we're talking here. So as with everything that comes good on the Linux side of things, there are always caveats. So the performance alone is reason enough for me to look past the issues with Resolve. But the issues are pretty major. First and foremost, that you will, that anybody who tries out Resolve will notice is you on Linux. You do not get audio through your system sound. You can only get audio out through Blackmagic hardware, which is very annoying. And I hope that that's not the case forever. But at the moment, it is, and that sucks. And that would probably be the biggest issue and a deal breaker for a lot of people, unless you already have or are willing to get Blackmagic hardware. Um. The next thing, if you are trying to run it on a Linux distribution that is not officially supported, which would be uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux or CentOS, those are what those are what uh, Blackmagic officially supports for DaVinci Resolve. If you're trying to run it on something else, you'll need to do some linking of like libraries and whatnot, um, which isn't that hard to do. But for a for the average user they, that might not know how to do that, in this little little. This is mind a little issue there, but that, that's like the easiest one to work around. Um, also somewhat significant though, okay look at that, that still took a minute 30 for the 4K render. So 720p's time bumped up a little, but the 4K render took like the same amount of time basically. It's awesome. Anyway, next issue is something with uh, Codex. So, one thing that, like this didn't used to be a problem. In version 12.5, the current version is just DaVinci Resolve 14. In 12.5, this was not a problem. Um, so ProRes works just fine. Previously, DNX HD would also work just fine. But for some reason in Resolve 14 here, if I try to bring in a DNX HD clip, it breaks Resolve for some reason. Sometimes it immediately crashes with the segmentation fault, other times it just kind of freezes like this. Um, another possibly relevant to that issue is uh, trying to use the built-in media browser and like going to locations that have clips possibly with those codecs it does not like. This also immediately causes it to crash, but that's not too big of a deal because you can just use your file browser and you'll be just fine. Um, Another thing I've found with codecs is if the audio is in AC3, which I, that seems to be one of few cases where it actually does cause resolve problems, you, ca you can't import it into resolve either. Other audio formats work, work fine, like AAC or PCM. Um, so yeah, so, some weird stuff there, but for the most part, like there, there's very little cases. So if, if you're a huge fan of DNX HD or something for some reason, then Resolve on Linux might not be for you. But if you're fine using other stuff like ProRes, you'll probably be okay. Um, oh, right. Okay. Um, other thing is on the free version of Resolve for Linux, 
you cannot import uh, H.264 video clips. If they have that codec, you cannot bring them in, much like the AC3 audio thing. They just you you will not be able to bring them into Resolve. Um, on the now supposedly on the studio version, which is the paid version, which is about 300 bucks, you can bring in H.264. Much like with the um, having to link libraries thing, that is also super easy to work around. And honestly, if you can help it, you probably shouldn't edit in H.264 anyway. It is super convenient, I agree. But for actual actual editing, um, Resolve can handle it okay. Um, other Linux video editors will not, especially even Lightworks. But um, y you'll want to use something that's like an intermediary codec meant for editing anyway, such as ProRes. Which I keep bringing ProRes up because that's what I've started using and it works great for me. So you'll want to use something like that for editing anyway. But um, for some people that are stubborn or like the convenience of editing from H.264 and don't want to have to like convert stuff outside of Resolve, then fair enough. That might be a problem for you. It is not one for me. Um, Although, if you do have the paid version or you're on Windows or Mac or something, they do have like, there is like an... Um, an optimized media thing in Resolve, which I haven't looked into into a lot myself yet because I haven't needed to, but that is something to keep in mind. So, personally, especially if some of these issues get worked out, like maybe if Blackmagic starts distributing Resolve as like a snap package or something, or maybe even a flat pack, although snap would be a lot more likely, if they did that, that would solve the issue of needing to like link libraries from your system libraries to the resolve libraries that would solve that issue um if they make it where you can have sound out through your system sound that would be the biggest thing for me oh look it finally closed good <laughs> that'd be the that'd be the biggest thing for me and a lot of other people if more of those issues get worked out i think resolve could be the best video editing software for linux and Honestly, even in the state that it's in right now, it's still a strong contender if you can get around the whole no audio without Blackmagic hardware thing. Which, again, I know that is going to be a big issue for most people, but just based on performance alone, and not to mention its other capabilities like great color correction and like just editing in the timeline is fantastic too. The editing tools are just fine. It's, 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 it's fantastic. So I'm going to try to start using it. It's going to be kind of awkward at first though, because I don't have, um, a Blackmagic deck link card. So I'm going to stubbornly try to edit this video without being able to hear anything. We'll see how well that goes. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm probably going to start using Resolve. And if you're considering switching to Linux, maybe it's something you could look into as well. Although, I understand a lot of the issues I brought up are probably going to be deal breakers for a lot of people. But anyway, that's going to be it for the, uh, the, 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 the That's going to be it for this one, dudes. So if you guys like this, want to see more things such as this, make sure to like, consider subscribing, all that good stuff. In the future, I'm going to do a more sort of in-depth comparison um, between Resolve and Lightworks. And I might also pay for a month of Lightworks Pro to get a fairer comparison of render times for higher resolutions. We'll see how that goes. But until then, this, this has been Axel. Yeah, this has been Axel. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you dudes in the next one. I realized there was something I completely forgot to bring up. Um, if you are using an AMD graphics card for DaVinci Resolve, you will need to use um, AMD's AMD GPU Pro drivers as you need the OpenCL from that. The free OpenCL implementations will not work with Resolve, unfortunately. If you're on NVIDIA, you should be okay. That is all I wanted to add in there. So, um, relevant to that reason, if you're on AMD, you'll probably need to use either Red Hat Enterprise Linux, CentOS, or an Ubuntu long-term support release, as those are the only three things that the AMD GPU Pro drivers officially support. That is all. Thank you. Goodbye.